This is going to be called Make the Bible Your Nostalgia. What is nostalgia? It's a sentimental longing or wistful affection for the past, typically for a period or place with happy personal associations. Crazy thing about nostalgia is it used to be considered a psychological disorder, even back in the day. You know, there are certain things that, that give you great memories about the past, like photographs of family get togethers, a certain song you might hear, a certain perfume you might smell. You know, there's a certain perfume my wife wore when we first started dating, and when I smell it, I think of those times, or like a song that you heard during a certain big part of your life, it brings you that b back to that part of your life. Nostalgia, not necessarily a bad thing. You just don't want to get so caught up in the past that you forget about the present blessings and the things of God that He has waiting for you in the future. You know, you don't want to get so hung up in missing the past that you don't enjoy the moment because it will one day be the past that you desire to go back to. But number one, I want to say nostalgia can be a bad thing. Not always, but it can be. In Numbers 11, 5 through 6, this is Israel talking. And you know, they, they came out of Egypt. They came out of rigor and hard bondage. They were under that hard affliction and hard bondage under Pharaoh. And look what they say in Numbers 11, 5 through 6. They say, we remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. You see, they remembered the fish. They remembered all that food that they were eating in Egypt. But then they say, but now our soul is dried away. All we got is this manna before our eyes you know if you're a christian then a good portion of your past was spent living in wickedness and sin against god just like israel a good portion of their past was living in the sinfulness of egypt and worshiping the gods of egypt even so a lot of your nostalgia is for wicked stuff in that sense it can be a danger you know israel was thinking about the food in egypt they weren't remembering the rigor and a hard bondage. You know, a lot of times when you're dwelling on the past, thinking about how fun you had it as a lost person and whatnot, you're forgetting that the way of transgressors is hard. And it was hard. And you weren't happy then. You're just only remembering the fun times and how much fun you had. And the devil will try to put that in front of your eyes and put the bad stuff out of your mind to get you longing to go back. In Numbers 14, 3 through 4, it says, And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain, and let us return into Egypt. You see, the devil will make you want to go back. He can use that nostalgia to make you want to go back. You know, you spend a lot of time wanting to go back. When what you have right now is better than what you had before. And what you have waiting for you is better than what you got right now. Job another, is another example of someone that had some bad nostalgia going on. Over in Job 29.1, starting in Job 29.1, it says, Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, Oh, that I were as in months past, as in the days when God preserved me. You see, he's wanting to go back to the past. He says, When his candle shined upon my head, and when by his light I walked through darkness. He, you see, many times when you're looking at the past, you forget all the struggles of your past that you had during that time and your mind only wants to recall things that you want to remember the devil only, will only put that in your remembrance when he's trying to get you to want to go back so job says in job 29 4 he says as i was in the days of my youth 
when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. You see, many people, they want to be young again, but you're forgetting all the struggles you had when you were young. I mean, think about it. You couldn't drive. You couldn't go nowhere. You're at the mercy of your parents, the teachers. I mean, thinking back about it like that, it really wasn't all that fun. It wasn't that fun at all. But you remember the carelessness that went along with it. You remember just being able to stay up all night and, and just do whatever you wanted to do. Uh, play video games, watch TV, didn't have to go to work. You remember all that stuff, no responsibility. But you don't remember that feeling of you can't go where you want to go and all that. You, you forget all about all that stuff. You're only remembering the carefreeness that went along with it. You know, when I, I like being an adult, an adult way better than I like being a kid. But a lot of people, they desire to go back and be young again. They desire to go back and go to high school all over again. I don't miss high school. Be, uh, to me, being an adult is way better than being a kid, especially I don't want to be a kid nowadays. But Job, he, he's, he's taught, he says, As I was in the days of my youth. He says in verse 5, When the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were about me, when I washed my steps with butter, and the rock poured me out rivers of oil, when I went out to the gate through the city, when I prepared my seat in the street, the young men saw me and hid themselves, and the aged arose and stood up. The princes refrained talking and laid their hand on their mouth. The nobles held their peace, and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth. When the ear heard me, then it blessed me. And when the eye saw me, it gave witness to me. Because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless and him that had none to help him. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. I was eyes to the blind, and feet was I to the lame. I was a father to the poor, and the cause which I knew not I searched out. And I break the jaws of the wicked, and pluck the spoil out of his teeth. Then I said, I shall die in my nest, and I shall multiply my days as the sand. My root was spread out by the waters, and the dew lay all night upon my branch. My glory was fresh in me, and my bow was renewed in my hand. Unto me men gave ear, and waited and kept silence at my counsel. After my words they spake not again, and my speech dropped upon them. And they waited for me as for the rain, and they opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain. If I laughed on them, they believed it not, and the lot of my countenance they cast not down. I chose out their way, and set chief, and dwelt as a king in the army, as one that comforteth the mourners. You see, the whole chapter is him going back and remembering the past before he was going through this horrible thing. Then look what he says. You turn to Job 30. He says, But now, they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock. You see, he says, But now. You see, a lot of times when you begin reminiscing on the old days, you forget about the blessings that are right in front of your face. You know, Job isn't seeing the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding that he currently has that he didn't have before. He had a lot of other stuff before, but he didn't have this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that he's got now after going through hard times, after losing some things. You know, Job couldn't see into the future and see he's going to have his own book of the Bible that's going to encourage millions and millions of people. Job also doesn't see the great things that God has waited for him at the end of the book. You know, he's going to get back double. You see, if you're, spec if you're saved and you're spending all this time dwelling in the past, you're not setting your affection on the much better things that are before you in the Lord. Solomon says in Ecclesiastes 17, he says, Say not thou, what is the cause that the former days were better than these? For thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. You know, don't say, what's the cause that the former days were, not, or that the former days were better than these? You know, older saints are bad about remembering the good old days and they're not enjoying the good old days in which they presently live in. These are the good old days too. This is the good old days for your kids. Your good old days probably wasn't what your parents considered the good old days. Their good old days was back when they were young. 
And then their parents, their good old days was back when they were young. Over in uh, Ezra 3, 11 through 13, it says, And they sang together by course in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord, because he is good, for his mercy endureth forever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with the great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the priests and Levites and chief of the fathers who were ancient men that had seen the first house when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes wept with a loud voice and many shouted aloud for joy. You see, some of these ancient men that saw the first temple were stuck in the past and couldn't accept the rebuilt one with joy. They, they were weeping about it. They wept with a loud voice. They didn't, they, they were remembering the old one. And that's the way uh, a lot of older saints are. They're remembering the past so much that they can't enjoy what's right before their eyes. They saw the first temple and they were stuck in the past. They couldn't accept the rebuilt one with joy. It says the, the ancient men that had seen the first house when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, they wept with a loud voice. You know, you think about the Lord in John 2, 19. He says, he's going to destroy this temple and in three days, he'll raise it up. The Jews couldn't accept that. They wanted to stay in the past. But the Lord's speaking of the temple of his body. You know, a lot of people won't accept the fact that our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. They, they just think they're in the presence of God in a church building. And if you show them that their body's the temple of the Holy Ghost, they don't want to accept that. They're stuck in their tradition, what they've grew up with. In Revelation 21, 22, you got something even greater than what you have right now. It says, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. If that wasn't eternity, where there was no sin, there would be a lot of people not accept, not like that temple even. You see, the future, if you're a saint, is much better than the past. So you need to dwell in the what you got coming your way. You see, but it's, nostalgia can be a bad thing, but nostalgia can be a good thing as well. In Revelation 2, 5, it says, Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. He says, Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. Stop for a minute and remember what it was that made you love the Bible to begin with. What was it that made you desire to be saved and love the Lord to begin with? Remember from whence thou art fallen, and repent. In uh, Hebrews 10.32 it says, But call to remembrance the former days, in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions. You see, what was it that motivated you so much to, do, uh, to endure a great fight of afflictions? Remember what it was. You know, some things activate your senses to give you that nostalgia feeling. And if your Bible is involved in your nostalgia, that's the best thing. You know, you think about your senses, the, your sound, you know, your, your hearing, the, the sound of the pages turning. You know, back in the day before I started recording my own lessons, I was all the time listening to uh, other audios of teachers like Bevan's Welder. And on his audios, you could hear those pages turning so clear on those audio audio lessons when he was giving out all those references and i could just still hear those pages turning and all the flipping through the pages i did in the bible getting all those references wrote down that I, that i still do now just that that page turning it just reminds me of the bible just just any book when i get in a book and i'm turning those pages i've spent so much time flipping through the pages of the bible just the sound of pages turning reminds me of the Bible. Or you think a smell. A lot of times smell will, will give you that nostalgia feeling. You, Like I said, you smell a perfume or, you know, I'll go to a grocery store. Anytime I go to a grocery store and I smell that smell, 
of that reminds me of when I worked in a grocery store. And the smell of leather on a new Bible. Anytime I smell leather, I'm reminded of that first leather Bible I got. It was a Ruckman reference Bible back in 2010, the year I got saved. And I remember the smell when I opened the box. You know, I, I've been uh, leather, in a leather boot store before in Pigeon Forge. And I don't wear cowboy boots. I don't even know why I was in there. But when I opened the door, that smell hit me. And I thought, I think it's time for a new Bible. That's the thing that came to my head. It reminded me of the Bible. Or you think about your the, the sense of touch, how a new Bible feels in your hands. Just the feel of the leather takes me back to the first time that I wrote in that Ruckman Reference Bible in 2010. Or you think about your sight. A certain page uh, will remind me of where I was when I was studying that certain page and that certain chapter. For example... I was reading 1 Thessalonians in my Common Man's Reference Bible, and I used to scan the page on a piece of paper and take it with me, fold it up in my pocket, and I'd take it to me, with me to work. And every time I see that page, I remember what year it was and where I was working at that time. And you see, the Holy Spirit will bring the Scriptures to your mind. He will bring all things to remembrance. John fourteen twenty six. Paul says to keep some things in memory. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4. Are you spending enough time in the Bible and around the book, around the Bible itself? Are you spending enough time in it to ever get any nostalgia concerning it? Are you learning enough of the Word for the Spirit to even bring it to your remembrance? You see, nostalgia can be a good thing if it's in the right stuff. But do not, this is the third thing, do not let nostalgia kill your present moment. You know, maybe you're desiring to go back. Maybe you're desiring to go forward. But for a lot of you, there will be a day when you look back in sorrow because you wish you could go back to this exact time. Like you're in the present moment. You're living it. You have it. You don't have the past anymore. And you don't have the future yet, but this very present moment you have it. And are you desiring to go back so much that you can't enjoy the present? And, you know, there's a balance to it. We're supposed to be looking forward to that which is to come with the Lord. But there's a balance to it to where you, you are in this present moment. And what you do in this present moment is very important. You know, uh, in Psalm 137, 1 through 4, it says, By the rivers of Babylon... There we sit down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required us of mirth, required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? You know, you, this moment that you're living in is going to be a moment that you desire to go back to. You're going to remember this moment. And it may not seem like much to you now, but you're going to remember it. And one of these days, you're going to desire this present moment that you're in. Think about the rich man who was clothed in purple, scarlet, fine linen, and faring sumptuously every day. Right now, he wants to go back so bad he can't stand it. And in Luke 16, 25, Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. You know, he desires to go back. He took it for granted, the things that he had when he was here. There's going to be a day when your current favorite song, that current favorite song of yours right now, is going to give you that nostalgia feeling, causing you to want to go back to this very present moment that you're taking for granted. And you're stuck in the past for some reason when you need to be living in this present moment. There's going to be a time when the perfume your wife currently wears reminds you of this time in your marriage and you'll want to go back to it. There's going to be a time in the future when you see your kids' toys that they're playing with right now, but now they're out, but then they're out in the shed and you'll wish you could go back to when they were little. And you took all this time when they were little for granted and you had them on the tablets away from your away from your presence so that you could be doing what you wanted to do instead of spending time with them. 
One of these days, your kids might be on drugs. They might be in a bad marriage. They might be in a very bad way. And you'll wish that you could go back to this very moment where you could be putting the words of God in them, in their heart, and enjoy them while they're happy. This is a great opportunity. Just living in the present moment, not taking it for granted. You can't do anything about the past. You can't do anything about, you can't see the future yet. But you can make the right decisions each day that will affect your future. You have to make the right decision in each present moment. Matthew 6.34, it says, take, no thought, take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Think about what you're going to do right now, the decision you're going to make. You don't need to be living in the past. You don't need to be wishing time away either. Even though we're looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing, you, you, you still got to be in this present moment, doing what you know to be right, right now. Now, the next thing, don't let nostalgia cause you to stop looking ahead. In 1 Corinthians 2, 9, it says, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But you're dwelling in the past. In Titus 2, 13, it says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. You're looking for that blessed hope. Philippians 3, 13 through 14 Paul says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. See, pressing forward. Remember what the Lord said in Luke 17, 32. He said, Remember Lot's wife. Well, what happened to Lot's wife over in Genesis 19, 24 through 26? It says, then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven, and he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of those cities and that which grew up on the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. See, she looked back. When you look back on what you have left behind, you're just looking back on things that are going to get burned up. Don't even waste time doing it. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19, it says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. He says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Isaiah 65, 17, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. When you get up in eternity, you're not going to care about the 50s and the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. You're going to have this new stuff right in front of your face that's so much better. Ecclesiastes 1, 9 through 11, The thing that hath been is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new? It hath, our, it hath been already of old time, which was before us. There is no remembrance of former things. Neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. See, the Lord's going to make something new. He's the one that can truly make something new. You know, Hollywood makes a lot of money off of your love, love for nostalgia. They recycle the same stuff over and over. No wonder that show Stranger Things is so popular with people. No wonder that show Happy Days was so popular in the 70s because that generation was missing the 50s. No wonder that 70s show was so popular in the 90s because people was missing the 70s. And now they got a show called that 90s show i seen I didn't see it, but I seen where it was being advertised. They were advertising that 90s show, and it's 2024. And that's for the, nostal the nostalgic 40-year-olds, I guess. So you've, you've got people that just desire to go back to the old days, the good old days. But they're neglecting the present, and they're forgetting that they got something much better in the future if they're saved. The best thing for you to do, get saved 
Start living for God in this present moment. And you can start making all your nostalgia about the things of God. And it's good to remember the good things that God's done for you. Just like he was always telling Israel, remember what he did at the Red Sea. Don't forget that. There's some things that you, that there's good nostalgia. There's bad nostalgia. If it's causing you to dwell in the past, longing to go back, thinking it was much better. That's not the good nostalgia. But there is a good nostalgia. You got to make it about the Bible. Make it about the things of God. And it can get you back into serving God when you get away from Him. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. 